Thank you. Hi. We should introduce ourselves first of all. I'm Chris Pearson. I'm Gordon Roberts. Gordon is the chairman and the treasurer of Edinburgh Living History. Um, if, when you asked earlier about motivations for dressing up, I think, uh, for, for volunteering, I think, I think I said dressing up. Uh, I've been a bit flippant, but not entirely. Um, we're um, a fairly long standing volunteer organisation, but we are slightly unusual in that we are a freestanding organisation, um, but with close ties to in the council. Yes. I think it's going to be quite a difference from what you've been hearing because uh, I think we are almost unique. I've never found another group that does what we do. Um, and we're tied into Edinburgh Council um, and we tend to be based in, within their properties. And as a result, uh, we don't have any of the resources that are thrown by a lot of other places. Um, we, although we work in their properties and things like that, we're hardly financially supported by them um, at all. Mm. Uh, we have been in the past, but the current financial system means that most of the stuff that we put on, we're funding ourselves or we're supporting ourselves on. Well, so I'll show, show you a little bit about uh, where we came from. So this is us, uh, the castle you see here, this is Lauriston Castle. Has anybody been to Lauriston Castle? Ah, no. Some people know what we're talking about, <laughs> some people don't. Yes, it's an old building up to the northwest of Edinburgh, uh, on the way to Cram and it overlooks the Forth, uh, sitting in some rather nice grounds. Uh, it's rather misnamed as a castle. It's more of a sort of a grand house, and the uh, the owners of it, uh, the last private owners, the Reeds, Win and Margaret, uh, left it to the nation on their death. Uh, Mrs. Reed was the last; who died in 1926. Uh, condition of the will was that it should be uh, maintained as it was at their deaths. So people go go in there and they'll see a rather grand private house because the people who owned it were were wealthy but not aristocratic. Uh, so it's a rather grand private house, um, as, as it was in 1926, which uh, presents opportunities and problems for us, because it is, it's a museum, which means basically we can't touch things. <laughs> so yeah, that pre presents an interesting problem we have to work around. But just to give us a little idea of our history, this is how we got started. My sister was a, a drama teacher in um, Edinburgh, uh, part of the council, and uh, she had ties with the museum uh, department there. And they were set up a uh, project whereby they, they wanted to try and get people in the local area to get involved in uh, the house by maybe putting in some, some drama into the house. So they started off, first of all, as this community project in uh, June 2005, but it was scripted, and that was quickly discovered that that was actually quite prescriptive. Um, it was happy for some people, some people love a script, but it meant that in any situation that arose, you couldn't adapt to. You know, if something suddenly happens or somebody asks you something, so eventually the scripts were thrown away and nowadays what we work on is basically improvisation. Um, we make up, well, well, I say we make it up. We don't make the facts up. We use the facts that are there already, but we try and build on them and we try and create characters that are more interesting. We do our own research and uh, we try and build a program. I think, I maybe should explain that we are not guides. Like we don't go around with people and take them into rooms and say, this is this, this is this, this is this. What we do is we go as the characters in the house and we set up a scenario that, for example, if you're coming to the house on the particular day, uh, maybe something is happening. We, we have one where, for example, we're doing uh, spring cleaning and the maids are out getting ready and they're complaining because they haven't got enough this and that 
and the house, Mr. and Mrs. Reed are wanting to go away, and where is this, and it's all the problems it's going to cause. And as they go, as people are taken from room to room, they're passed on. So maybe um, Chris's Mr. Reed will be in one room and he will send them through to the another room. Um, mm -hmm. So that they're experiencing the life of the, of the castle um, and people are coming and going all the time. So you've not just got one person going with you, you're going into different rooms and you could be meeting the same people coming back in different places. And there's little incidents going on, so there's a little bit of drama and a little bit of humour going into the things. We, we try and put a little something in, you know, like we've, we've had it that one of the maids or something has, has been misbehaving and is, uh, and is going to be uh, censured. <laughs> and that's always quite good for a bit of uh, fun. So we try to make links uh, between the various scenes in the different rooms and also between upstairs and downstairs. Yeah. Uh, we've been since 1940, uh, since 2014, we've been doing 100 years back. So each year we've been looking at the war and how the war affected the people in the house and in the community and things like that. And it means that we've had to do obviously a bit of research, but we have discovered so much about what was happening in the city in that time, things that you wouldn't believe. Uh, <laughs> This is how it was originally. Sorry, I'm stepping on your toes, Chris. <laughs> yeah, we have some pictures of the, the kind of things we do. And this, as, was, uh, as Gordon was saying, um, the, the characters we portray are real characters. And of course, naturally, you don't know all that much about what sort of person they were, so we have to just work around that. But yeah. we work on the basis of the facts, um, insofar as they're known. What level of improvisation? It's total improvisation. Total improvisation. Yeah. We, we've discussed the, the basic storyline that we want to convey beforehand. So if you had a new volunteer then, how would you go about it? Usually, usually when we get a new volunteer in, we start with that person as a maid, because we find that the maids are probably the ones who'd say less, and they, they stay in the background. Either that, or they can be a guest who's come into the house and being shown around so that they don't actually have to do too much to begin with. And we found that with people who uh, have joined the group, that after a, a couple of uh, times doing this, they want to become much more involved and that they want to sometimes move upstairs. We've also moved out of Lauriston as well because uh, it is coming, I mean, this is not Lauriston. I wouldn't be wearing this in Lauriston because this is period is totally wrong, this is 18th century. So we moved out and we've been into various other locations in the city, like the, the Museum of Edinburgh and the People's Story. If you know Edinburgh, you'll know that these two museums sit opposite each other in the High Street. And the Museum of Edinburgh is um, much, much grander, really, isn't it? Whereas um, the People's Story is what it says. It's, it's, uh, for the folk of the time. And we have the upper class people across the road and the poorer people. It's really, uh, it can be very, very entertaining. It can be quite scary. Um, we have one of our people, uh, Nori, um, she does an Edinburgh scary woman. And she addresses, you know, she talks in the broad vernacular when she's talking to, and uh, quite often Norwegian tourists and things like that are utterly dumbfounded as to what exactly she's saying to them. Uh, but it allows us to address people, uh, to go up to people and say, are you here for this? Have you come in to... Or is it the approach with small boys, are you here for the job as a, as a, as a messenger boy? Yes, because oh, uh, when we girls are going to be mates, are you going to be made for the, the countess? You know, all you have to do is get up at six in the morning and enter the chamber pots and things like that. Yeah. So we're trying to throw the history in, but try and make it uh, as lively and as uh, living as possible. The period, one of the periods that we cover is the suffragettes. Uh, in Edinburgh, because in, in 1911, uh, uh, the suffragettes marched to London, and we use that as the basis of it. And uh, our, our ladies are in the museum, and any, any lady who comes in gets, would you like to sign our petition? Would you like to join us and walk to it? And then they, in that way, we can get in. And I go in as one of the husbands and say, this is ridiculous. 
who would have believed that we'd have, you'll, we'll never get women in Parliament? It's a ridiculous notion. Uh, uh, put it the opposite view. I did that once, and this Australian woman, she came at me. <laughs> she, she would have hit me. I, I, it was quite one of the most scariest. <laughs> and she actually came back afterwards and apologised. She said she had been so caught up in the moment that uh, it took her back to an event that had happened in her own. Uh, adolescence and uh, sorry, I've gone off. I, th I think in one of our um, one of our presentations, we had one of uh, was it Kath, perhaps one of the women actually opposing votes for women. Which, yes, which makes makes for makes for a very interesting argument to relive the argument as it was at the time. And the nice thing about the the suffragettes thing is you can take it anywhere. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be in the museum. You can actually take it into any of the buildings that we go into. Uh, we, we've done it in Lauriston, we've done it in museums and things like that. Um, that went through very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> we also create our own oh, yes. pieces. Um, and this weekend coming, we're doing a murder mystery. We, this is our, be our fifth one. We set it in 1910, not in the house. We pretend that the house is somewhere else. Uh, usually an isolated, Agatha Christie type thing with an isolated house and so that, and we have a murder and things like that. But we also try and throw in events from the time, so that, uh, for example, the the one that we're doing at the moment, the characters, one of our characters has been involved in uh, stealing African artifacts from uh, Benin, and that actually happened. So we try and pick up events and, and put them into the murder mystery. And uh, we set out. Um, that sounds very impressive. I mean, the most we can take is a very small place, because it's 25, but we still get a lot. We manage to sell out. And does, so, does all that income go directly to the group? Is it no, people or the school? It, or? it goes to the council. Right. And, uh, some examples of the murder mysteries, different ones. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, uh, when we're going from museum to museum. This year we were in the City Arts Centre, if, if you were in Edinburgh and you went to the, if anybody went to the A to Z, we were asked to take part in that and we thought it would be a good uh, potential. It was terrible. It was, it just didn't work. And I tell you, it's great when you're doing something and it really does work, but when it doesn't, <laughs> it's an absolute nightmare. Uh, it wasn't so much that the people who came along didn't enjoy it, it's just there was no one there. Uh, you know, we would, we would spend an hour there and we would get two or three people. So it can be quite soul destroying as well. And this is the danger, I think, with volunteering, that you take a risk that some days you're gonna be there and nobody's gonna come and see you. And other days you're going to be there and you're going to be, oh, it's going to be so busy that you wouldn't know, you can hardly think. Yeah, we did, we did our midsummer, this is this thing, we did our midsummer's marriage in the house. It was a contemporary one and the idea was to show off the grounds of the house and to take. It was the one day in the year that there was a thunderstorm. Oh, we started it. We started it, and somebody said, that sky's got awful black, and it was the most fantastic storm, but it did mean that we had to, we couldn't do, we, fortunately we were able to adapt it and do it inside, but we weren't, we're still hoping to do it outside sometime. Uh, so again. Mm -hmm. That was our second attempt, it was very nearly the same thing that happened the previous year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yes, just to illustrate a few of the characters from uh, inside the house. Uh, one of the things, I mean, we have, we're have we a small group. We, have, we only have about a dozen people. And this costume, you know, <laughs> and this was made uh, by a proper historic, she, she makes costumes for historic groups and things like that. So this is authentic up to a point. But I should have a jacket, and the jacket was going to cost three, four hundred pounds. We don't have three, four hundred pounds. I'm wearing. Marks and Spencer's slippers, because I can't get shoes that's too expensive. Now, if we had HES, 
then uh, they could supply the budget. But we have to make do with what we, you know, what we're, we're getting. And, and the council, bless them, don't help us very much at all. So, so except we wouldn't exist if the council didn't let us into their buildings and into their properties. So we have to be pleased that we can get in, but we're also a bit sort of sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So do you? Do you think it's possible to maybe engage um, people who would be willing to volunteer to make the costumes for you rather than you having to buy them? It's not so much, it's not so much, even just get, we have got people who are willing to yeah. make the costumes. In fact, it's one of the things, there, there are two, when we send for volunteers, the two things that we always get lots of are people who want to make costumes and people who want to do research. Well, the thing is we do both, well, we don't do the make the costumes, but we do the research ourselves. People get nervous about our approach because it is different from the, the guiding, and you're not doing it with a, out of a, you know learning the facts and saying this is this. I, I'm, you may be different. I don't know. Who you can find that. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're doing it in character, it really means you're acting, and people are nervous about acting, and people are nervous about improvising, um, unless they're show-offs like me and Chris. But we've had an awful lot of people actually come through with us and be very nervous about it and get thrown in more or less at the deep end, and now they love it. They love it, yes. They keep coming back. The group wouldn't function. As you can notice, we, we're mainly old people and we keep getting older. We've got a young girl there, we've got a couple of young girls, but because we tend to do most of our work during the week, it's very difficult to get young people to, to come and be part of it. We'd love to have more and more young people. Um, we've had some German girls, and they were fa it was fascinating because we did a First World War thing and they did some research and discovered things about the way that German girls were treated in Edinburgh in uh, 1914, um, things that we didn't know. So we've been able to use that to talk about now our German governess and things and the fact that she's been locked up in Hoy. Um, so it gives us <laughs> I've gone off script to get out. <laughs> Good, so that's, that's, that's the way we work. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just go off script. <coughs> so basically, that's us. Yeah. <laughs>